Hi, uh, let's take a look at the review questions for logic and conditionals. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you really understand the rules for AND or NOT and the logical operators before you try these logic questions. And both the, well all the exams are going to have at least a couple, maybe three or four sets of questions based on these concepts. So it really pays to study this and learn how it works. Okay, let's get going. So if a equals 3 and b equals 5, what is the truth value of a greater than or equal to b? Well, a is less than b, so this guy is false. If x is true, what about not x? It's false. On the other hand, if x is false, then not x is true. If x and y are both true, what is the truth value of x and y? That's true, and that's the only time x and y is true. They both have to be true. If x is, so if x is false and y is true, x and y is false. Now if x and y are both true, x or y is also true. Remember, this one is true unless they're both false. So not your normal or, but this is the logical or. Okay, so if x is false and y is true, x or y is true. If x and y are both false, then x or y is false. If x and y are both true, what about this? Not of the quantity x or y. So what do you do here? First you figure out x or y. x and y are both true, so x or y is also true. And then we have not, so the whole thing is false. Because not reverses the truth value of its argument. Okay. Now next we have a fairly complex formula. And we're asking for the truth value under the different sets of values for x and y. Now one way to solve a problem like this is to actually work out a truth table. And that can actually be helpful, if you, especially if you have to do multiple ones. So let's do that first. So what we'll do is uh, we take our goal expression, which is this, and we break it down into its parts. So we see that this is basically an AND of two parts. So what we're going to do is get the truth value of the two parts and then we can calculate the AND. Okay, well the first part then is not x or y. So first we need not x. So let's do that. It's the reverse of x. So where x is true, not x is false. So we're going to get false, false, true, true. Okay, now we want not x or y. So remember the rule for or. If at least one of them is true, we get a true. So in the first row here, we have true and false for these guys. So the y is true, so we get a true. Next row, they're both false, so we get a false. So notice I'm working with these two values. Okay, next row, they're both true. And next row, I have a false and a true, so that's still true. Now I'm going to work on my other piece. It's the not of the quantity x or y. So first we need x or y, then we can figure out the not. Okay, x or y, well, it's true as long as at least one of them is true. So we're getting true, 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 and false. Working with the columns for x and the column for y. Okay, not x or y, I'm going to reverse this column. So I'm going to get false, false false, true, and now I want the end of this first column, uh, sorry, this column here, and this column here, and so with the end they both have to be true. So in the first row here I have a true and a false, I get a false. Two falses gives me a false. A true and a false again, a false. And the bottom row I got two trues, so it's a true. Now I can use these results to answer these questions. If x and y are both true, well that's the top row, and I see that my final value here is a false. If x and y are both false, that's the bottom row, I have a true. If x is true and y is false, then I have, sorry, I have a false. And if x is false and y is true, 
that's also false. That would be this third row. Okay, now you don't necessarily have to do the truth table. The other way to do it is suppose you just want to know the value of the expression for one combination of the values of the arguments. Well, in that case, what you can do is just break it down and figure out the pieces individually. So let's say I want the value for when both x and y are true. So looking at this expression, I see it, that I have an and, and I go to the first piece. So you're still going to use the same strategy, piece by piece. Um, both true, so not x is false. Y is true, so this first piece is true. So I would remember that I have a true here. Now over here, x or y is true. Not of that is false. So I have a false here. So now I have the and of a true and a false. That's a false. So that's the other way to work it. Basically the same idea, but I don't work out the whole truth table. Okay, going on. Now we're going to look at some code fragments that use ifs in comparison and sometimes logical connectives, so we bring in some of what we've been talking about in the previous question. So here's our first code fragment, and we want to know the value of var c after this code ex executes. So all right, var a is 2, var b is 3. So I have an if here, if var a is bigger than var b. Is var a bigger than var b? Well, no, because 2 is not bigger than 3. So this is false. So with an if, that means we're going to do the else part and set var c equal to var a. Well, that's 2, so the final value of var c is going to be 2, which is answer a. Okay, now there are uh, buttons in the uh, worksheet that goes with this review that you can use to exercise this code. It's embedded in little button procedures. Good way to study is to change the code, modify it, try to predict the answer and see if you can, and then run the code and see if you got it right. Okay, so here's another little code fragment. Um, this time we have a couple of options. So we again want to know the value of var c after this code executes. So a is 2 and b is 3, and our first diff has an or in it. So var c a bigger than var b. No, that's false. Or var a plus var b bigger than 5. Well, var a plus var b is 5, uh, sorry, bigger than 4. Var a plus var b is 5. 5 is bigger than 4. So this is true, and we're going to get 10. Now, remember how ifs work as with these else ifs. As soon as we find a true one, that's the one we take. We don't even have to look at the rest of the if as soon as we found one that works. So this one is 10, and the answer is E. Okay, going on. Here's, a, here's another one. Now here the value is going to depend on X, and we're going to, we want to know the value for different values of X, the value of multiple. So it starts out being set to zero, and then we have an if with a couple of else ifs. So what if x equals 4? Well, if we do this if, 4 is less than or equal to 5. So we're going to get 25. It'll take the first one, and so the answer is a. Okay, next one. What if x equals 7? Well, if x is 7, this is not true. This one is, though, and... That means we'll get 15. So that's B. Okay, what if X equals 12? Well, it's not less than or equal to 5, but it is bigger than 6. We do that one, and so we get 15 again, B. Now, you might go, but it's also bigger than 10, so how do I know which one? Keep in mind, it will always look in order and take the first one it finds that's true. Okay. What if x equals 6? Well, let's notice here, it's not less than or equal to 5. It's not bigger than 6, and it's not bigger than 10. So, none of those were true. Multval didn't get changed. So, it's going to be 0. The answer is D. There's no way you can get 10. 
Any number that's bigger than 10 is also automatically bigger than 6. So we'll always take this first one, as we saw with the 12. Okay, let's keep going here. The, the important thing is it takes the first one that's true. All right, here's another one. In this case, we want the value of multiple if x equals 21. Well, if x is bigger than 20, we get 9, and it is. So this will be B. Okay, what if it's 16? What's well, not bigger than 20, it's not less than 15, and it's not less than 12. None of them are true, it, and there's no else part. So it didn't get changed, it's still 10, so the answer is A. What if X equals 13? Not bigger than 20, but it is less than 15. So that'll give us the 8, which is C. Okay, what if it's 7? Uh, sorry, what if it's 11? Okay, so if it's 11, it's not bigger than 20. It is less than 15. So we're going to get the 8. Again, on the principle that we do the first one that's true. So that's C again. Okay, here's another code fragment with a little more complicated setup here. So we have var A, var B, var C, and var D. They all have values, and we have this if. So we want to know what's the value of var D when this code finishes. Well, okay, starting out, var A is, is var A bigger than var B? No. So we're going to skip this whole part and do the else. var D is 4, so we're going to get answer D. All right. Now... What would you have to do to get make var d equal 2? Well, okay, we first we need var a bigger than var b. And then we need var b less than var c. So we need a bigger than b and b less than c in order to trigger this particular line. Well, let's see here. a bigger than b and B less than C. That looks like answer B here. Okay. What about making it equal 3? Okay, this one, we need A bigger than B again. But we can't have either of these. We can't have B bigger than C, and we can't have B less than C. So B and C would have to be equal. That's the only way to make this line trigger. So, okay, we need A bigger than B, and B and C equal. That looks like D. These are kind of hard, so don't worry if you have a little struggle with them. But think it through. Okay, so now we want to know how to get the 4. Well, that was our initial set of values. Let's just see what the properties have to be. Basically, we need A less than or equal to B, and that'll take care of it. Because then we'll skip right down to the else part. So... That would be part A here, answer A, where A is less than B. Okay, what about the 5? 5 is the initial value of var D. So the question is really, is there any way to come out of here, not do anything, because it's going to be set to either 1, 2, 3, or 4, if we do these. So... Let's just check that. If A, is big, if A is not bigger than B, if A is less than or equal to B, we're always going to get the else part. So we'll get 4. If A is bigger than B, then we do this if, and it also has an else. So there's really no way that we can avoid changing var D. So the answer here is part E. None will give this result. Okay, and finally, how do we get a 1? Well, we need A bigger than B and B bigger than C. So let's see if we can find one like that. And that would be answer C. Okay. Next. Here's a procedure definition. And it has option buttons. Option large, option medium, and option small. And it wants us to figure out what happens under different circumstances. 
So what value is printed in the list box if option small is checked? Well, first of all, let's take a look here. We're, we're printing this uh, variable called answer val, which here we set to the value of mult val. So again, we're figuring out mult val. And we want to know if option small is checked, which one? So, okay, we start out with mult val equals zero, and we have 25 for large, 15 for medium, and if option small is checked, we get a 10. We're going to set it, so the answer is 10. This is B. What about option medium? Well, you can see that you're going, to, this is not true, this one will be true, you'll get the 15, that's C. What about option large? That'll be the 25, that's E. Now what if no option button is checked? That is possible. And if that happens, then mult val will never get changed in here, it'll still be zero, and so will answer val. So that's it. Okay, next. We set mult val here. If check override is true, we set answer val to be two times mult val. Here we set answer val equals mult val, and then that's what we print. So, okay. What answer is printed if option small is checked, and check override is also checked? So this is very similar to the last question. If option small is checked, multiple will be set to 10 at this point. Now in here, answer val is being set to 20. But we didn't change multiple. So here, this line is going to set it back to 10. So our final value is 10. Now that's not a very good way to proceed, but it's what this code does. What if option medium is checked and check override is not checked? Well, we get a 15 in here. And this is not checked, so this doesn't do anything. And so we're still going to have the 15. And that is answer C. This code is strange and probably has a bug. See if you can explain why. Okay, so I wanted you to think about this. The answer why is this, this, as you saw, this check override code has no basic effect because even if we change answer val in here to be two times mult val, we'll change it right here to equal mult val whether or not we did this if. So this if basically in the end has no effect. I mean, it changes it, but it gets changed back. So that's not uh, something you would normally want to do. Now here's a better version. So here if option small is checked and check override is also checked, we're going to get the 10. We'll multiply and get the 20. And notice that here this other piece is contained with an else. So we won't do that. So it'll stay 20. And when we come back here, that's part D. We'll get our answer D. And of course, if opt medium is checked and check override is not checked, uh, we're still going to get 15. We'll get 15 right here uh, using this else part. So, okay, and 15 is answer C. All right, so again, try playing with the code. Um, especially if you didn't understand how uh, this part was working, how we were getting the answers. What you can do is actually change the values of A, B, C, and D in the code, run it or step through it, and watch what happens and which lines get picked, and that'll help you understand it. All right, have fun, and that's the end of this part.